Hello everybody and welcome to episode 25. Last episode we created this little slime uh, that can wander around. They just, we, we plonk them down and they just wander around in a random direction. They can't meaningfully interact with the player. The player can't meaningfully interact with them at the moment. And over this next set of episodes we're going to be adding just sort of one feature per episode to this slime to make them uh, feature complete. And in this episode we're going to go from just wandering around to being able to chase after the player when the player gets too close to them. Okay, They're still not going to be able to hurt the player, the player's still not going to be able to hurt them, and so on. That'll come uh, over time. But for this episode, we're just going to make it so when we get too close to the slime, the slime goes, aha, and chases after the player. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, open up P enemy, our root enemy object, and come to the create event. And here we're going to have to add a couple of new variables that I'm going to put in the intrinsic variable section of here um, to do with aggroing, okay, is what we'll call it. You know, when you get too close, you aggro the enemy, it, it, um, it decides to start chasing or attacking you, okay? So I'm going to write aggro check is going to equal zero, and aggro check duration is going to equal five. So these two variables, aggro check, aggro check duration, are going to work together to be a timer of sorts that makes it so that every five frames we're going to check to see if the player is near enough to start chasing. Okay, um, five frames, that's quite a lot actually, but um, uh, for this, this type of thing. But it's uh, a neat trick in game development in general. Um, that will help you out a lot with performance is when you have a check that you don't really need to perform every single frame, um, just perform it every other frame or every few frames and you can get massive, massive performance bonuses if you're consistently doing that kind of thing and you'll be surprised how often it just doesn't matter, how often you just don't need to run every kind of check every few frames, okay? This isn't a particularly performance intensive one, you know, just uh, we're just going to check to see if the player is nearby and so on, but it does save us doing that maths, you know, doing the, the point distance check and, and so on that we're going to do. Um, every single frame for no reason, okay? We're just going to do it every five frames um, instead because, it, as you will see, it makes very, very little difference and you will barely even notice that this is a thing. Okay, so with those two added, uh, in the variable definitions window for P enemy, um, I'll zoom right in so we can see. I'm going to add another um, variable in here. This is something we're actually going to want to expose for our different enemy types, that's why it's going in here, it's going to be enemy aggro radius, and we're going to make that by default be 48, and the slime can just stay at 48 as well, that's fine. Um, as you might guess, that's just going to be the distance from the enemy, um, it's going to check kind of in a circle to see whether the player is near enough um, to start chasing, or, or do whatever you want your enemy to do when it has been aggroed, okay? All right, so that's the variable cell done. We can close this now, and I'm going to come to scripts and find the slime wonder script. Um, just at the bottom of all this, where we're just, you know, this is all just our, our wandering around logic, right at the bottom, I'm going to start writing some more stuff. Let's make this bigger. Nice and big. There we go. Scroll down here. We'll close that down for now. Um, so this is going to be check for aggro. Right, um, simple as that. We're going to do if plus plus aggro check. I'm glad I explained that whole uh, plus plus uh, minus minus thing at the beginning of a variable because it seems like I do it a lot in the code from this point on. <laughs> um, so that's going to add one to aggro check and then return it and check to see if it is greater than or equal to aggro check duration. So the moment that would hit five, uh, this would go off, okay? So then we're going to set aggro check to be zero, um, and then we're going to do if instance exists o player uh, yeah, close bracket again and uh, point distance x y o player dot x uh, o player dot y and I can't see the rest of my script. Let's move that. <laughs> Let's move this. Make this smaller. Point distance. So if the distance between um, where this enemy currently is 
and where the player currently is, is less than, I'm guessing, yeah, like less than or equal to our enemy aggro radius. Um, have I spelled that right? Yeah, okay, that's come up blue. Hopefully I have. I'm just going to check that real quick. Enemy aggro radius. Yeah, okay. For some reason, it, it, it was just took suspiciously long to turn blue there, and I was worried I'd spelled it wrong or something. But no, okay, enemy aggro radius. So assuming that that distance is less than 48, and uh, our player actually exists in the first place. And remember, we do that check first, uh, so that if the player doesn't exist, we shortcut out and we just go, well, okay, it doesn't matter whether or not this is true, uh, because if we know this isn't true, therefore we're, we're never going to do the thing. So that's why we do that check um, first in the if check before this one. Okay, but if all that is true, then we're going to go from our uh, wander state uh, to our chase state, enemy state dot chase. Now you might recall we don't actually have a script um, set up for uh, any state other than enemy state dot wander, but we'll fix that right at the end, so don't worry about that. Uh, target is going to equal O player as well. Um, this is sort of optional, but this was to um, basically allow you to within since this is in you know a, a slime wander or whatever you might reuse this code for other types of enemies other different things um, and just to make it quite simple and easy if you really wanted to for whatever reason uh, to make the slime or whatever enemy chase um, something that isn't the player right you could give this any target then it would and, and it would work right which is uh, totally unnecessary I think <laughs> for, for this game because uh, there isn't anything we're going to want to chase other than the player. Um, but I did it nonetheless. That was just part of uh, how I originally coded this, so it's how we're coding it now, gosh darn it. Um, so yeah, uh, set the state to be enemy uh, state dot chase, the target to be O player, and that's all we actually need to do in here. I will just say that um, I would vaguely recommend against doing this kind of thing, and it's sort of symptomatic of my coding style at the time I was writing the code base for this, um, in the I was very, I still am in a way, very into this whole entity-oriented system and trying to make everything super modular and be like, well, if I need to do this at any point, then I can do this, and just making everything super open-ended, um, which can be really powerful, but also can lead you to never getting anything finished because you're making everything way more modular than it needs to be. In our game that we're going to create for our tutorial uh, for this series, um, I can guarantee there's never a time where the slime is ever going to want to target something other than the player. Um, so, and if you're just going to follow the tutorial through, and or you know that for the game you're making, that's you know also going to be the case. Um, you could just you could not do this, and then um, from this point on in this video, wherever you see me write target, you could just write O player instead. Okay, it's really just put there so that um, if for a flexible for an amount of flexibility that realistically we don't need <laughs> okay just so you understand okay so that's everything for the slime wonder script and now i'm going to make a new script uh called slime uh chase um let's group this together with our slime one i'm going to make a group in here um if you're watching this in the future, this has probably all changed uh, how the resource tree looks. I know it looks very different in 2.3. Uh, this is still version 2.2. Uh, so you know, don't worry about that. I'm just I'm just organizing scripts. Okay, not an important part of the tutorial. Okay, but I'm just putting them in there so I know where they are. Um, it's probably worth grouping up our enemy ones at some point. I think we only have the one for now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. But anyway, we have slime chase, uh, which is. Uh, our latest function and uh, this one is going to start in a very similar way to slime one we're going to do slime uh, sprite <laughs> slime index sprite index equal spr move um, just to make sure we're always in the right animation depending on what um, state we've come from and then I'm going to do if instance exists target or o player if you're doing it that way in the, the more committed way if you, if you will um, so if instance exists target x2 is going to equal target.x, y2 is going to equal target.y, x2 and y2 being the uh, x and y we are going towards. Um, I don't know why I, I've become such a fan of x2 and y2, the, the, I don't know, something about these two variable names I use a lot throughout my code and throughout my tutorials. 
uh, always representing a destination X or destination Y. Um, so whenever you see me do X2 and Y2, it's always like um, the X destination or the, the, the Y destination. Um, I don't know, I just, I, something about that just feels very intuitive to me. I, I like I like it like that, but it might not to you. You can write whatever you want. Either way, X2 and Y2 equal target X and target Y. Uh, var distance to go is going to equal point distance x y x2 y2 okay um so the amount of distance we've got to go is the distance between where we are and where we're going simple uh image speed is going to equal uh 1.0 because you know we might have changed our image speed in the wonder thing to stop when we when we finish moving then i'm going to write dir for direction equals a uh, point uh, direction x y x2 y2 and then if distance to go is greater than enemy speed so if the uh, we're assuming that we've got more distance to go than the distance we will move this step okay um, and if that's the case h speed is going to equal length to x enemy speed direction and predictably the exact same thing for vertical speed v speed length the y enemy speed direction remember get those x and y's correct those h's and v's correct okay else if uh distance ago is equal to or less than enemy speed uh, then we just want to move by however much distance there is to go. So, wow, well, I can just copy and paste these lines actually into here and just change enemy speed for distance to go. Same here. Then the last thing we want to do is just make sure if we're to face the correct direction. So I'm going to write if h speed uh, is not zero, image x scale equals sign h speed semicolon uh, then collide and move enemy tile collision oh right close bracket semicolon all right um, so we set our h speed and v speed appropriately and then we do the collision this is a very simple chase uh, AI if you will using that term very very loosely um, because if we get caught, if we if we start chip being chased by a thing, we get caught behind a wall, and the slime can't get past the wall. It's just going to get stuck against the wall. It'll vaguely slide towards us if it can get like um, some speed on one axis that it can't on the other. Um, but um, it's it's very easy just to 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 trap like an enemy who's got this kind of behavior just by going behind a collidable object, right? But we're not too fussed. I don't. I don't think this. I don't think the slime needs to be that complicated. I don't think that's a, a problem for this particular game. So we're going to keep it simple. All right. Um, then the very last thing we need to do, I think, to get this to work, is I'm going to come to O slime, go to create. We'll maximize this. Uh, make this a bit bigger. Um, so at the moment, our state is enemy state wonder, uh, but and it's the only state we actually have a script set up for or a function set up for. I've fallen back in my own habits there of uh, calling uh, functions scripts uh, because that's what they are in 2.2 and below. Um, whereas actually I should I should be remembering to say function there instead. So anyway, we're going to copy and paste this line and create an enemy script for enemy state chase. And it's going to be the function slime chase. Okay, no brackets on the end of there, remember, because we're not calling it. We're just referencing the function. All right. Okay, so I'm going to run this now. We're in the game. Uh, the slime is wandering around. And then if we get close enough, they start chasing us. And like I say, if I come in here, <laughs> yeah, we, we can easily just sort of cut them off like that. Because it's just a very simple behavior. They're just, just, just chasing after us. But if, yeah, if they do get, like, most situations, like, simple situations like that, they will just sort of slide around it because, you know, as long as they're, because they, you know, they're moving along both axes independently. So they'll eventually get around little corners like that. Uh, but still very easy to get them just stuck like that. But that's fine. As I say, we're just going to keep this quite simple. 
Um, the next stage of being attacked by the slime, I don't know if this is what we'll do next or... There's a bunch of different things we can do next. It's going to be something to do with the enemy. But the next stage of this attack process, which might be what we do next, um, is making it so that when the slime gets to a certain distance from the player, we're going to have them do a little jump attack, okay? Um, just because I think it looks aesthetically nice just when we get to there, and then they'd like do a little thing where they squidge down and jump at you. And you can see it working in the um, the demo version if you if you go through the the source code link uh, in the description. There's a demo you can download of the final game that we're working towards. And you can see how the behavior uh, is for the slime just in general. And um, you can see how all that works and what we're going to be moving towards. Okay. So still no interaction between the player and the slime. Still no interaction between the slime and the player. Uh, but now um, it's starting to behave a little bit more like um, what we'd expect from a, a hostile threat, if you will, in the game world. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this one, catch you all next time. My videos are supported almost entirely and funded almost entirely by my lovely supporters over at Patreon. If you like the work that I do and you want to get more involved with it, uh, have a say in topics I cover, get behind the scenes access, see some videos a little early and get your name in the credits and all kinds of cool stuff like that, head over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs and you can do all those things. As I said, these are the people who are wholly responsible for these videos existing at all, and so I want to take this moment to give a shout out to them, and a special shout out in particular, and in no particular order, as always, to the following. Phil Keen, Andrew Gilbert, Kesa Ho, Flaming Ewoks, Carter Green, Justin Adega, Alex Schenkel, Goose, Troy Mera, Yoram Pater, John Harwood, Zach Collett, Figgy, Relentless Rex, Cabbage Pants, Tyler Hubble, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Samian Yalegaglo, Rene Dam, Zephyr Flame, Rupinda, Hare, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Do What Doobie, Hyungjin, Bertie T, Daka Dondago, Robert Churches, Baz the Dog, and Max M. Those names belong to a bunch of super generous people who are helping me bring this work to you along with all the other names on this list. So thank you to them and thank you to you for watching. Best of luck with your game and I'll see you on the next one.